So Leicester City 2, Wolves 0, a first defeat in the Premier League in the first away game. And some before we move on to the negative points, and there were quite a few, or let's call them points for development as we do in teaching, uh, there are a number of things that Wolves should be really pleased about today. I thought the way that they started the game, the first 20 minutes, was some of the best football I've ever seen from a Wolves team, but just lacking that clinical finishing touch, which was a real shame. You could have argued that Wolves could have been... 2 or 3 nil up at half-time, some of the chances that they had, Moutinho hitting the bar, Doherty having a shot cleared from the line. It was Some of the football was scintillating and the movement down the wings was superb. I thought Johnny and Jota were linking it really well in that first couple of minutes. Jimenez as well, we've seen now in the Villarreal game, the first two Premier League games. The amount of work that he puts in is superb and I think he's going to be a good player for Wolves. The two in the middle, Moutinho and Neves, absolutely bossed the, the whole game. But all those good things being said, there are a number of things that Wolves need to work on now going forward if they're going to succeed in their ambition of finishing mid-table this season. Uh, I think really, at the moment, I'm worried about looking down the table rather than up. The first player that I want to highlight uh, will be Matt Doherty. I thought that for the majority of the Everton game and then all of today's game, he was completely out of his depth. He looked... He lacked urgency, he lacked energy, he didn't he wasn't offering anything as a wing back. You've got to be getting up and down those wings and making things happen. He just looked completely bereft of any confidence. He looked like he was he was gonna be beaten every time the ball was being run at him. And that doesn't doesn't breathe confidence into the back three then. If your wing back is gonna be beaten, Ryan Bennett knows that every time the ball's coming he needs to be on guard for the his own goal. It was it, it was poor positioning. The only re the way that he was approaching the ball, he only really had one option, which was to head it the direction in which he was facing, which unfortunately was right into the corner. If it had been down the other end, it would have been an amazing header. Uh, Patricio could do nothing about it. Uh, but he was putting himself in a position there where he should have been. His body position should have been better. He should have been able. He should have been able to have more than one option: head it over the bar or head it easily comfortably to Patricio or to hit it backwards or anything but he just I don't know he lacks that sort of brains to me that um, that you need in the Premier League now I have mentioned how good Jota was in the first 20 minutes or so but there were a few moments we looked weak in possession now we've seen Jota be knocked about quite a bit and we thought that perhaps he'd get a little bit more space and a little bit more time and he wouldn't be clattered as much in the Premier League well, that hasn't been the case in the first two games he's been knocked about a bit and today in particular he looked really really poor um, and in fact he was knocked off the ball three times and the third time led to the second goal for Leicester what I want to see over the next couple of weeks is Vinagre to start at left back and Johnny to move over to right back I think Johnny looks a decent player he's so quick and he's good at intercepting. There was, there was a point in the first half where the ball was being played out to Leicester's right wing back. And Johnny read it so well and nicked him before him. Very much like Andy Thompson, I've been told. He just, because he's a right-footed player on that left-hand side, his body shape and everything like that is against him. And he's sort of, he's inclined to sort of run into the, into the touchline rather than if he was on the right side or if a left footer, footer was on that left side. They could continue parallel with that, with the byline. But I don't know whether that's something that Nuno is looking at or whether now I don't know if Doherty's injured after the challenge from Vardy earlier on. I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. But think something needs to be changed at the back, uh, and the full backs is something that I think would offer more protection for the back three. The back three itself today they just looked slow and and they don't like teams running at them. We saw last year against Aston Villa when. Their players ran at us. We panicked. I think Connor Cody is a very, very good centre back or sweeper, whatever you want to call his position. But when powerful strikers run at him, he starts to panic, and he's when he's backing off like that, it's very difficult for him. So I don't know whether the Den Donker might come in over the next week or so because he's apparently a week behind everybody else in terms of fitness. So. He could be ready for the Manchester City game, but where does he come in? Does he come in at right centre back? Because Bennett played okay again today. Or does he come in for Cody and then you take out the captain of the team? Or does he come in from Bolly, who again was a little bit error prone today? Not as much as last week. Another point to make I think we really, really missed a left footed set piece taker. That 
somebody asked me yesterday on my live stream about will we miss Barry Douglas well I don't think we miss him in general play in open play but we certainly miss having a left footer who can whip a ball in we've got Neves and Moutinho who can take superb free kicks with their right foot but then when you've got a corner from the right hand side, you want I want a left footer taking it and swinging it into that near post. I bet if you watch all of our goals from corners last year, you'll see that most of those goals came from in swinging corners with Bolly or Sice just getting these their headers onto it in the near at the near post. We ha we lack that at the moment. There's a couple of free kicks as well from good positions on that side, which Moutinho took and just couldn't get the right delivery into the box. That being said, Moutinho, I must say, is one of the most accomplished players I've ever seen play for Wolves. Um, the number of times he touched the ball today was unbelievable. Every time it sort of, everything was going through Moutinho, and it was, you could see the experience there. Had we not had him, I think it could have been a lot worse. He was really, really passionate when they went one 0 down. He was g and everybody up, and particularly talking to Doherty. But it's it's difficult. I think the first two games here now we've learnt an awful lot. For me, the Premier League is a lot faster than it used to be. Whether that though is because Wolves are actually able to compete, I think with teams we are competing. We weren't outclassed by Leicester today. I think we we had a lot of chances and we just failed to be clinical. Leicester had three chances, I'd say, and and scored two of them and one one of them we handed to them. And the second one apparently took a deflection, but it looked, possibly looked like it, Patricio could have done more at his near post. But that being said, the first two games against two teams who were who finished in the top ten last year, who will probably finish in the top ten again this year. We've learned a lot, and we're going to move on now to Manchester City, which is going to be an incredibly difficult game. But I said before the game, I said after the game as well that knowing Wolves, having watched Wolves for as long as I have. I guarantee that we'll be surprised next week. We've seen so many times where we've lost games that we shouldn't have done, like today, and then we've gone and picked up a result against a massive team. Man City are the best team in the Premier League, maybe the best team the Premier League has ever seen. So it's going to be very, very difficult, but we'll see. Maybe we can pick up a point from that, but we certainly need to improve defensively and attacking as well. We lacked urgency, we lacked directness. Traore as well, just to touch on him briefly, I know I've gone on for an awful long time now, but Traore, for me, I can see what Sam Allardyce meant last week when he called him a sacking player. The Wolves fans were chanting his name immediately when he came on and he beat a couple of men. He's very, very good at beating a man. We've got to see an end product from him. We've got to see things getting into the box. I hope, I, you know, I completely accept that this is his first game with the team, but you could just see straight away that he's not thinking about He's thinking about the ball coming to his feet rather than where can he be and make things happen. I'd ra I'd rather see a winger running onto the ball and beating a man rather than standing still and then beating a man, which is what Troy Roy is doing. And I want to, he's got to get better balls in the box and there's got to be somebody in the box to hit as well. Jimenez and Bonatini, Bonatini in particular, had a poor game today. But Jimenez, they don't get deep enough into the box. You know, you've got Troy Roy coming in on the right hand side, but there's nobody attacking the penalty spot or the six yard box for him to hit so there's a lot to work on there's a lot also to be positive about but this is a work in progress i think perhaps it's been a bit of a wake-up call for us fans as well so we've got a tough game next week against manchester city then west ham who've lost again at home today so we could that's a massive fixture already and every game every single game in the Premier League is enormous 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 game let me know your thoughts of the game today in the comment section down below and please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and please if you do see anybody vlogging or talking about the matches then leave them get on with it we do this for fun we don't get paid don't go abusing people whatever your opinions be. I know that people will not agree with everything that I've said here. There's a, an incident today after the game where equipment, which you know we invest our own money in all this stuff, has been damaged. And for what? What has it achieved? But anyway, I'll get off my soapbox now. Thank you very much for watching. And look after yourselves and each other. Goodbye.